Greetings all you studs and studettes out there. Today on Karate Corner, we are continuing with episode D of True Justice. Good stuff. Cool. Well, uh, don't, don't be too excited there, uh, Stevie pal. You don't always come out looking the best in my videos, so maybe, maybe just hang back on that emotion. But let's head on out to Seattle, the city in the Northwest, with uh, settings that, I don't know, look an awful lot like Louisiana to me, and where most of the show was actually filmed in Vancouver, which, uh, it's like the Seattle of Canada. Well, with, with a lot more syrup, I suppose. Well, okay, let's, uh, let's get to this, because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start in Seattle's East District. And I, I don't know when I became a fact checker, guys. I did at some point, and I don't know why I do it, but I had to look up Seattle's East District. It doesn't have one. I did find a neighborhood called Capitol Hill. I don't know what goes on there, but I can only assume it was like the birthplace of avocado toast. We start the episode with one of our cops getting pulled out of her car and Seagal the Savior coming to rescue her. I don't get the bike involved, Steve. Your days of property damage should be behind you. What did the bike ever do to you? Ah! Police. Going to arrest. Well, I think you just gave him a good court case. I know I talk out of my ass, like, a lot, so feel free to correct me here, but if he doesn't identify himself as a cop right off the bat and he just, like, starts attacking this dude... Albeit justified, it's justified, you know, he was assaulting that lady. But if he doesn't identify himself, can't that dude just say he fought back because he didn't know Seagal was a cop? I think he's got a case there, but we head on over to a trailer park that we saw in episode one. You know, that park with all the New Orleans drug dealers in it. But there were too many actors on the payroll, so they're all dead now. and littered around their bodies are various weapons, like uh, this AK-47. See, guys? I learned. I, I learned what a gun is called. Good job. Good job. I hope. <laughs> please, please let that be an AK-47. I don't know many guns. You got pistol, rifle, bazooka. I'm, I'm out. They all dead, Kane. Thanks for the call, man. The Russians didn't know the waterways too good, all right? It's easy money for someone like Domian who grew up traversing the waterways. All right, yeah, I'm sure he did grow up on the waterways, but in episode one, he said he was from New Orleans. So how did those waterways help him out in Seattle's waterways? Does Seattle even have waterways? Uh, I mean, I kind of, sort of looks like that. I mean, I suppose it would be difficult navigating your drug boat around all these ferries. But we cut over to our drug lord who, in episode one, we learned his name was Nikolai. But in episode two, we learned that his last name is Putin. Yeah, I guess for ease of names, if you're Russian, your last name's gonna be Putin. I apologize, we're filming in Vancouver, so Putin. The owner of the store, you shine flashlight on us when both arrived. If uh, police start looking in our direction, we will be warned. That is a very Russian accent, holy hell. It, by very Russian, I mean, like, too Russian, right? It doesn't sound great. Also, speaking of Vancouver, this dude's Canadian anyways. This is kind of a deep cut, but this actor is Gil Bellows. He actually played a guy named Tommy Williams in the Shawshank Redemption. But if I drop this fucking thing, you got me on destruction of property, too. <laughs> <laughs> and my, how the mighty have fallen. How's true justice treating you, pal? Our Seagal chats it up with his C.I., and you can just really hear the love and support in his voice. I got some things to do, and then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna take you back where you're going. Let me ask you something. How's it going at the construction site? The only reason why I got you that job is because your mother was a friend of mine. That's a thing, yeah. Uh, also, whatever about Seagal, how about that B-roll? This just looks like the cameraman was on his way to lunch and somebody else was like, hey man, 
did you shoot that B-roll for episode two yet? Um, yeah, hold on. Okay, sign one, the another sign, those are places, right? We're done! Inside the secret precinct, some random street cop knows just how to get on Seagal's good side. You know, I mean, sometimes you're the dog, and other times you're the fire hydrant. Gates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Actually, uh, kind of got into it with one of the carjackers. Messed him up pretty good, you know? Wow. Yeah, I tossed him up like a salad. Like I said, any other sheriff, you're probably getting in trouble. But Seagal, he loves beating up random people. Hell, he did it to start this episode off. But you gotta try harder than that if you want to be one of his boys. But Seagal calls another cop to look into why those New Orleans druggies were killed. And if our bad guy Nikolai Poutine did it. Oh, so that's who's doing the carjackings. That's my opinion. Well, I'm just on my way to the DEA info, share. And Seagal's just casually polishing a samurai sword. Yeah. I need you to find the people responsible for those murders. I think we're gonna crack it wide open. Just give me a minute, man. I'll get him. Yeah. Yeah, I'll help. But like, give me a minute. I gotta go hone my craft. We cut to our two boys being bros. Cause now that's not gonna happen. You know if we take this, they're gonna be pissed. No, man, you really worried about the mullet heads and narco? Come on, nice. All right, it's nice, so what? You guys, you're really into that car, huh? Okay, well. Congrats, you just took out a 2010 Dodge Charger. Arguably the ugliest Charger they ever made. Look at the back lights, ugh. Have fun in that sweet ride, bro. We cut back to the precinct and that cop from before is trying his best to earn himself a nickname. All right, so about those carjackings. Is it one guy, a gang? I can't give you guys that information. That's all right, we'll just come back when your parents are home. Well, no need to be a bitch. Why don't you give me your number? And you and I can hang out later. You give me a fake number, so when I don't call it later, you won't feel like such a loser. Ah, oh, yeah, I can't believe that didn't work, man. You did all the right stuff, you objectified her. You didn't give her any useful information. How dare that nasty B word? But they now believe that our bad guy Poutine is not only the big bad drug boss, but he's responsible for killing all them shrimp-loving New Orleans boys. Man, I don't care nothing about the kitty. I care about the bad guys. I'll share the kitty and the intel. I'm cool with all that. Well, there's not much more than a few random tips. Nothing earth shattering there. All right, man, I got some new intel from DEA. Nothing earth shattering. The women on the force want to prove themselves to the boys, and they step up and offer to run an undercover op. I'm kind of old-fashioned, so if y'all want to do that, I'll let you do it with the caveat that I got a pair of eyes on the inside watching y'all. Hey, I'm old-fashioned, so I'll allow it. But as long as those men are somewhere nearby, am I right, man? This is what men do! Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is men stuff! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they get ready for their op. Our resident nice guy goes in a second time to try to get in Seagal's entourage. He really ups his game. Yeah, hey, bro, just wondering, uh, you know, if you could put a good word in uh, for me uh, with Kane. Spend some quality time with Sporty Spice over there, eh? Show her what's what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's doing fine. This conversation is not going your way. Uh, maybe stop digging yourself a hole. What are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm fixing a divot. All right, well, look, wouldn't you rather have a guy watching your six than some split tail like that? Hey, bro, you know us bros. We're, like, super sexist and stuff, right? No, uh, I'm not really following you there, pal. Well, let's, you know, let's be like horrible and sexist together. Steve's, Steve's gonna love it. He loves this stuff. Am I right, man? But the ladies start their op, and even though Seagal said he trusted them to do it on their own, he still tails them in his vehicle. And generic male leading role number one, he's there too. Hey, at least kudos for Officer Big Sleeps. He respected their decision and did not show... No, he did. Never mind, he's right there. He's inside the club, as a matter of fact. But they go inside. Putin sees them and starts hitting on them immediately. Nikolai. I'm Kathy, this is Sandy. It's so nice to see your fresh faces here. But he instantly doesn't trust them. He's like, no, you're too good looking to just go out. People like you don't just go out. So either you want free drinks, which that's going to cost me money, or you're into my shady business dealings. So he detective sleuths them pretty hard. 
plates on your car expire in December. They don't register undercover cars till end of year, so they don't have to pay license fee. I'm guessing that you two are cops. That's right. We're not. What makes you think we're cops? Oh, well, you just said so. And that guy across the bar, you know, the one who totally looks like a cop and is staring directly at me. That's good. That's a good accent. So seeing that they aren't going to get him to admit to anything illegal, they leave, they all regroup, and now we decide to go about it a different way. We totally misjudged this guy. He just ate us for lunch. Sure you're not just being paranoid? Believe me, we're sure. We know that some of Putin's business associates are carjackers. So maybe if they can get a carjacker, that guy can tell them more stuff. So they decide to give the ladies one more chance to prove themselves because the op at the club failed, which I want to point out it only failed because that guy who is clearly a cop was given off big cop vibes like the whole time. But sure, blame the ladies. So she gets in a car. She starts driving around trying to tempt bad guys into taking her vehicle. They're taking a pass. I wonder why. Uh, maybe it's got something to do with the loaded pistol you're holding and asking people to come up to your window. I don't know. It's just a hunch. However, a little later that night, we get the scene from the start of the episode. You're on parole, so uh, you just double down. Tell me about Nikolai Putin. I might be able to make some time go bye-bye. So what do you think? How'd the new girl do? She did good, huh? Oh, yeah, no, she did. She did great. Sitting in her car, not paying attention and getting attacked by random. Really, that's some top-notch police work there. But they take this guy in. They ask him some questions about Putin, and it still sounds kind of weird. <laughs> hey, if there are any spies on my channel, I am not talking about Putin, okay? I'm talking about Putin. It's not my fault they have the same last name. Anyways, he tells them about a shipment of drugs coming into the docks where Putin will be to collect. On their way out the door, Officer Nice Guy is desperate. He's like, Seagal, buddy, how much ruder do I have to be towards women for you to notice me? Hey, Chief, uh, can I have a quick word? Yeah. She's, uh... Real looker. But uh, would you break her heart? With a body like that, cares about her heart, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you like when I talk like that, Stevie? Huh? You want to go have a 16 candles moment? Just you and me? Let's go. That went down a weird path. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. They all head out on the mission. We see that cop who was attacked. She fell asleep in her cruiser. Somebody drew on her forehead. That's embarrassing. But they see Putin and his gang. They throw a cartoon smoke grenade into the dock house. Everyone's confused, right? Where did you get such a grenade? Did that clip I used from Space Jam earlier somehow open up a portal to their world? Who knows? Everybody starts fighting. Seagal, he's desperate. He turns on all the cheat codes that he can afford. He's got zero recoil. And he can see through walls. And even with all those teenage hackers helps, he cannot kill shit. Back inside, they kill everybody but one guy. And that one guy looks, he looks really upset to still be alive, if you ask me. Back outside, Putin tries desperately to separate himself from Steve Seagal. And Seagal is doing whatever he can to be associated to the man. Calling him his close friend. Moving closer to him. Asking to hang out all the time. Joining a pro-Kremlin party. Wait, nope, sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Got my Putin's cross there for a second. Back it up. This Putin, none of that. He, he just breaks his leg. And that is that. Their friendship is over before it began. They get the bad guy. Back at the office, they run into Steven's ex-girlfriend. Chief, don't worry about it. I got this, okay? What, you were trying to pull? Oh. That's kind of out of left field. But he doesn't seem too worried about it. I'm working on it, man. Look what I got over there. That ought to get rid of it, don't you think? Even in TV land, you gotta have a hot lady. Of course you do. The man is unbelievable. You know what? That is a very accurate description. He, he really is unbelievable. But not unbelievably, this episode is over. 
So let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. Let's do this. Let's do this? Do what? Continue to get your ass beat? Come on, man. Just give me a concussion. And now, some of my favorite Seagal quotes from this episode. I appreciate the ride and everything, but this really wasn't the direction I was in. Do I look like the kind of guy that cares about the direction you're heading in, man? How do you say ass in Russian? I mean, if that's a problem, where can I get me one? Man, you don't want none of this, man. You don't never want a problem like that. See, my daddy used to say, even an old blind rooster hit a piece of corn once in a while. Sir, you smell that? Uh, yeah. Well, that's the scent every woman knows. The smell of a little boy jealous of his daddy. That's a weird boast. Are you, are you saying every woman knows the smell of a jealous little boy? Lady, I would not be super proud of that superpower. We did get a new name from a mid-level drug dealer, Nikolai Putin. <laughs> My God. I See, I wasn't making it up. Have, have you guys ever heard him pronounce Vladimir Putin's name for real? Check this out. For anyone to think that Vladimir Putin... Vladimir Putin... You might have missed this day in police training, but maybe you should say put your hands up before you kill one of them. I, I don't know. That is everything. Up next, we are back in action with some real police work with Steven Seagal's Lawman episode, duh. And I cannot wait, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave some comments, I would like to give a shout out to my patrons over on the Patreon page. That list is growing. All of you guys are amazing. So from the old faces to the new faces, thank you each and every one of you. If you want the power to vote on future movie reviews and control my feeble little mind, you can head on over to that page and sign up. The link is down below, the merch store link down below, and my Discord channel also down below. Join whatever you like. I will see you all next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. Hey, I'm old fashioned, so I'll allow it. But as long as those men are somewhere nearby. Am I right, man? <laughs>